Welcome. Hi, my name is Matt Zach, and I'm the uh, head of corporate development at ANSYS. Very pleased to be with you today. And I'm joined today by Uli Holman of Microsoft. Uh, many of you are familiar with Uli, but I just wanted to share a little bit of his background. He's the corporate vice president and distinguished architect in the cloud and AI business at Microsoft. He's part of the senior leadership team in engineering, and he's responsible for customer-led innovation across the cloud and enterprise platform uh, portfolio. And I just wanted to welcome you, Uli, and thank you very much for being here with us today. Thank you very much, Matt, for the introduction and for the kind invitation to share some thoughts um, and have a great conversation with you. Um, I really am super happy with the partnership we have started to develop, and I see a great future for us um, working together on our customers' behalf. Thanks, Uli. That's very important, and it's it's great to hear that. Um, I want to start off today by just asking you first off about the big topic that's in front of everybody's mind today, which is really the pandemic. And the pandemic's fundamentally changed the way we all work. We're all working from home. I'm joining you today from my my family room. Um, you know, Microsoft has been at the front and uh, sort of at the front and center and supporting this huge wave of the remote workers that are that are relying on Teams and other collaborative technologies. And I know for a fact that that Ansys as a company is uh, is is dependent upon the work that we're doing with Teams. You're helping us run our business every day. So I just wanted wanted to hear a little bit from you about your experience. And, uh, and what Microsoft is doing to help the millions of users as this situation continues to unfold. Yeah, it's an interesting times. I mean, I think I have not been in a single place uh, this long since over 30 years, mm -hmm. um, because I normally spend time visiting customers and so forth. So for me personally, this is a huge change and it certainly shows in uh, the way we are working. I mean, we have the conversation on Teams today so Microsoft Teams has been one of the cornerstones for remote work. Um, and I think we're now up to 75 million uh, active users per day. Uh, there's a multiple billion call uh, minutes per, per day being called on Teams and so forth. And so being able to discuss and work remotely, I think is a really important element. Teams is one part of it, but we're also seeing a lot of people doing um, remote desktops because people sit at home, um, it's not necessarily secured, so people feel better if their uh, company information is hosted in the cloud um, with a remote desktop and people logging into this remote desktop uh, from their home machines and so forth. Um, there's a whole bunch of other elements we're driving <clears throat> with respect to remote work on the one side, but also uh, COVID responses because um, we have done a heck of a lot of work. We and got news, uh, the community at large has done a really amazing job helping with the frontline workers. Um, one um, element that I really found fascinating was the CDC bot that we developed um, with the CDC to effectively make sure that only the most critical questions really come to um, CDC workers. So I think it's on the one side, this shift to remote work and on the other side, really partnering with the community um, across the technology sector uh, to help with uh, first party responsors, uh, first line work and so forth. I think um, it was an amazing effort over the last two years. As Satya said so great, um, I loved his sentence there. We have seen digital transformation that was supposed to be two years happen in two months um, because of the urgency and great news is that the cloud and remote technologies have been available uh, to us to make this happen. Yeah, that, that's fascinating. And thank you for sharing your experience. As I said, you know, Ansys as a company is, is really um, relying on on Teams and other other Microsoft technologies to run our business each and every day. And um, and uh, we're seeing improved collaboration across uh, across our entire en entire team. Um, and it's it's fascinating how it's developing. And I think the reality is this is this is here to stay. For uh, for uh, maybe not just the near future, but I think it's going to be in place for for uh, for a very long time and fundamentally change the way we work. Um, let me just move on for a second, and you know, you and I have talked about this before, but um, we both we both uh, share belief in an open ecosystem 
and uh, and belief in the the importance and role of partners and how they can help uh, really help customers with game changing differentiated products. I just want to hear you you know your perspective a little bit. Share with the audience how uh, a company like Ansys fits into your strategy from a from a partner perspective. Yeah, Matt. So as you already said, we are really a company that has been partner driven since forever. I've been with Microsoft for twenty nine years. And I've always thought about partners as part of our business model and not being something separate. And I always look at partnerships as something where both parties win. Um, and ultimately, obviously, the customer wins when partners really work together closely. Um, and when you look at game changing, as you introduced me, um, I lead a function called customer-led innovation. And customer-led innovation is all about spending time listening to the customers, working with the customers, and then figuring out how do I take what the customer really is looking for and build it. And I always make the decision, do I go internal, meaning do I talk to my engineering teams, or do I go and talk to a partner? And that partner can be a system integrator because it might make sense there, or it can be a partner like you, Ansys, that has a set of capabilities that we have no desire or no intent to build, uh, but makes sense in this specific customer scenarios. And so uh, we are talking together to a number of um, industries right now and industry partners to effectively say that Azure as a cloud environment and Ansys as a high-end simulation environment from an end-to-end -end perspective, together really ch uh, change the equation of how um, various scenarios from autonomous driving uh, to operational simulation uh, can actually happen. And that's how I think about partnership, meaning let's jointly understand what the customer is trying to do and then bring our portfolio together, layer it and architect it in a way that it isn't just, okay, yeah, you're using some virtual machines of mine. That's great, but what we, Ansys and Microsoft, are really doing is thinking through how we layer the technologies together and bring them to bear in an optimized fashion uh, for specific scenarios, either for an industry, automotive, autonomous driving is a great example there, or specific customers. So that's how I think about A, customer-led innovation, and B, how partnerships fit together to really solve customer scenarios. Thanks, Uli. That's an interesting perspective. And you touched on this a little bit with respect to, to Azure. It's one of the first areas of collaboration where we're working on, uh, that we're working on together. We're leveraging all the tremendous HPC capabilities of Azure, uh, and and we're going to hear from Aaron Aaron uh, Chapel, who's another Microsoft VP, one of your colleagues, in more detail tomorrow about this topic. But could you say a few words about the future of simulation, and it's really its impact on how companies design products, and and specifically whether you think there'll be an acceleration of people moving to the cloud as a result of of, of COVID. Well, I think there are two pieces in here. First of all, I do believe that companies will accelerate the move to the cloud simply because um, of flexibility. If you are in an industry that is under stress in like healthcare that needs more resources, you need to be able to quickly grow. If you're in an industry that currently um, has economic issues, you might to want to reduce your resources. And doing that on premises with a CapEx model is just really complicated. With an OPEX model, which is the operating model of the cloud, you can effectively grow and shrink based upon your needs. And that's the, the reason why I think cloud computing will, will accelerate, actually. And I do believe that simulation will also accelerate because a lot of times it's much, much cheaper to simulate what you were trying to do in the physical world uh, before you actually do it. And I do believe not only will we see more simulation happening because of the capabilities that um, ANSYS, for example, is providing, but we're also seeing more um, application. So uh, today we are seeing it often in engineering, um, like autonomous driving development, we are simulating and re-simulating and those kind of things. But I'm thinking, we, I think we will see more application of simulation, uh, for example, instead of you running a recipe through a plant or factory um, by doing it, you actually might simulate the running um, and so forth before you actually go run it. Or you take um, IoT data in real time and keep a simulation running to see 
if there are any issues that are emerging and so forth. So I believe that two things will happen. Cloud with its advanced capabilities of shrinking and growing um, and the high performance computing capabilities will effectively help <coughs> simulation technologies become faster and more efficient. And at the same time, the simulation, simulation capabilities are maturing to a point where it's actually cheap and fast enough to effectively simulate even in almost real time. While, for example, a process, a, a product is being built, you simulate the further steps in order to make sure that everything is as it ought to be and be able to do preventive uh, action uh, in order um, when you find something that's not quite right. So I think simulation and cloud go very well together, both economically as well as technology-wise. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean, we we very much see, you know, we have the goal from a from a strategic perspective of making simulation pervasive, and and seeing uh, the use of simulation from the very front end of the design process, all the way through the build process, and of course the operation side of the house. And speaking of operations, you know, one of the areas that we we announced was a, a collaboration around digital twins, and we talked about that at Microsoft Build last month. Uh, so what do you see in terms of industry demand and value to customers from, from a digital twin, from the digital twin um, initiatives? First of all, I want to thank you for the partnership in this area, because I believe that this is the next frontier of how we manage information. The problem is not that we don't have information. The problem is we have too much information. And a lot of this is not contextualized, meaning we're getting data from some system or some element of the system, but we don't know where it fits in the entire solution. So there's to be a human that has to say, oh, okay, this piece of data is in a valve, that valve is part of this machine, this machine sits in this production line and so forth. Um, and with digital twins, we are able to effectively contextualize information and bring it into a model that allows a user to immediately see oh, we're talking about this building, this, this floor, this room, and the lamp inside this room. And that's the information that we are seeing. And I would like to now see how are all the lamps in all rooms doing that are similar from nature. So for me, digital twins are really allowing you to contextualize information into the real uh, world so that you can place the information and you can understand the impact of that information coming from a specific thing or uh, device um, right in context. And, and therefore, I do believe we will see um, a surging demand. For me, um, the digital twin concept, as we all know, is fairly old. It's actually over 20 years. The PLM uh, folks came up with it, actually. But I think we are now at the point where the technology, cloud, IoT, those kind of things are ready to help you really um, use digital twins, not just in the product lifecycle management or in other aspects, but across the entire lifecycle. And as you and I, or we agree um, as two companies, there will be many digital twins, not just one, um, because you will have many different um, perspectives on this financial uh, engineering, uh, fabric uh, product, um, the product lifecycle, um, product um, running in the factory and so forth. And therefore, the work we are doing or aspiring to do as the Digital Twin Consortium is really making sure that the industry rallies around concepts that are compatible, that information is shareable between various systems, so that a customer can say, I would like to use a Digital Twin throughout my entire um, environment and not having to uh, deal with information lo uh, loss or complex integration jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm super excited about Digital Twins. It's early days, uh, but I'm certainly hopeful that with uh, partnerships like we are uh, aspiring to drive, that Digital Twins will make it um, big time into the industry. Yeah, and it's I know we're, we're part of an exciting consortium uh, as co-founders with you and others, uh, but it's exciting. It's certainly an exciting area of technology. Let me just turn... Um, Quickly to the to the uh, automated driving for a second. So uh, from from an autonomous perspective, and um, you know what is happening in the world of self-driving cars. Um, 
you know, what are you doing to, to support that? And, and maybe a few words about, about, about some of the work we're doing together uh, would, be, would be helpful. Yeah, so Microsoft is, we've looked at this space quite a lot and we've decided that, again, partnership is the right way of going about this. And so we are building an integrated platform that worries about the data being captured, transported, into an environment and then stored so that uh, application developers or scenarios like simulation or re-simulation have the data available um, and doing this at scale. Because one of the challenges for autonomous driving is the sheer amount of data uh, that's coming from, for example, test fleets um, and other things. And us providing a secure, uh, compliant um, platform that scales to this kind of demands is really what we're working towards. And then we're also working on providing a, a DevOps model for the development of autonomous driving or automated driving functions that effectively allows you to build these uh, com compliant workflows that developers need in order to uh, develop the function. So from our perspective, again, platform work to enable um, OEMs, tier ones and partners to have a reliable, scalable platform. And then on the other side, building a DevOps environment to help speed up the software development so that we get automated fun uh, driving functions faster. And I look at this as, again, a partnership model where ANSYS, for example, has a huge part to play because while my driving miles is important, you can't drive enough miles in, uh, to really um, simulate all scenarios um, through all weather conditions and so forth. So we believe uh, that virtual simulated driving um, is gonna be a huge part that augments the test driving that people do, um, but augments it in significant ways. And therefore I did think has a significant role to play to do two things. One, make autonomous driving um, happen faster, but also make it cheaper to develop because ultimately it's cheaper to uh, simulate miles uh, than driving miles with humans and so forth. So I think the combination of speed as well as cost improvement uh, will bring um, a platform of cloud that provides you with the data and compute capacity and simulation on top uh, make that a really great combination. Sure, and I, I would even add on top that uh, bes besides speed and cost, but I just offer safety and reliability. You know, at the end of the day, uh, we all collectively need to know that this that this works, right? And so that's yeah. one of the chief challenges right now, of course, is is trying to understand um, how do we know that we're that 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 we're good enough and we've done enough, right? In yeah. in all scenarios, so that's a, it's a critical part of the technology for sure. So I think, Uli, we're we're at the end of our chat. Um, I would like to uh, would like to thank you again for the partnership, for the relationship that Ansys and, and Microsoft enjoy. Uh, I think we will um, collectively uh, help our customers and our partners in the future do tremendous things together. And I look forward to many, many years of, uh, of, of great collaboration with you and your team and the entire Microsoft organization. And I thank you for, for everything you're doing and for the time that you've, you've spent with us. Thank you uh, it's very my much. I'm, it's my pleasure. I thank you, Matt, for inviting me again. And I look forward to changing the world um, through customer-led innovation that we jointly uh, engage in and really drive our engineering teams, yours and mine, quote-unquote, Microsoft's, uh, forward into new areas that we haven't really understood necessarily, but we both believe are important. So thank you again, and good luck with the conference. I really appreciate the format and uh, certainly the invitation. It was fun. Great. I look forward to, uh, to changing the world with you. Thanks so much. Thank you.